All right, stepping into the studio, uh, a couple of young kids just starting out in the business, uh, Ryan Gosling and uh, Damien Chazelle, who are uh, behind this movie, The First Man, and uh, Richard Roper is saying that The uh, First Man is a movie that, uh, that a human being should not miss. So congratulations on that. That is a, it's a great, great, great movie. And i got to say, I'm a crazy like space aviation guy <laughs> when it comes to movies, and the opening scene... Which, uh, you know, the right stuff has a similar kind of concept scene in it. And I always thought that's one of the coolest scenes I've ever seen in film. And you beat it. <laughs> and that is saying something right there. So that was absolutely amazing. So congratulations on Thank this. You. Uh, Ryan, tell us a little bit about how this started for you. Is this uh, a story that you tracked with when you were a kid that you were interested in? What brought you to this project? Well, it's interesting that you bring up that first scene because when I first met Damien, this was before La La Land, we met about this film. And I think, he, I think, I think essentially you just des- described that scene. In detail, uh, you know, we immediately I was tucked under the wing of a B-52 bomber mm-hmm. in an X-15 about to be shot into the atmosphere. And he said, you know, like, well, that's that's how I'd like to start. And we'll end on the moon. And then <laughs> we'll figure out the rest. <laughs> uh, Pretty much the way, same way NASA did it. <laughs> yeah. About 61 to 69. We'll figure it out. Right? And then I had this opportunity to read Jim Hansen's book about Neil. And I realized uh, just how little I knew, how much sacrifice was involved in these missions that we have this sort of gilded image of them being a predestined success right. but that uh, it was anything but it was uh, you know uh, th- this one of the greatest uh, human achievements and uh, and and uh, yet it was littered with 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 failure the road to it and so I thought Damien's instinct to sort of to uh, focus on, uh, on 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 Neil and Janet Armstrong and, and just take a deep dive into them personally and experiencing this through their eyes was really inspiring and and, and so yeah, that's sort of how it began. I'm going to jump into and do the business part of this. The movie opens everywhere, including, of course, in Chicago, October 12th. That's this Friday. First Man. It has 112% on Rotten Tomatoes. First time ever. It's actually over 100%. Uh, it is, but it is, uh, it is in all seriousness, it's, it's, it's a great film, so check it out, guys. Uh, Damien, I want to talk a little bit about your techniques here, and Ro mentioned uh, you know, the, the opening scene, and of course, the moon landing, and there's, there's so much intensity and almost a claustrophobic feel you brought to this, and also, if you could talk a little bit about the use of music, which obviously is a huge thing to you, and sometimes we have this operatic score, and then we get that dead silence. Maybe you can talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that for us. Yeah, I mean, I guess both things, uh, on both fronts, it was about trying to really give the audience a truly immersive experience, you know, so so hopefully you, you come out of this movie feeling like you've been on these missions, you've been to space, and also that you've been uh, privy to these really private, intimate moments between Neil and Janet and their kids. Um, Ryan had a great way of sort of describing what we were trying to aim for the movie uh, uh, back when we were working on it. It was the moon and the kitchen sink. It was about, you know, how can you use those extremes? You have the biggest cosmic adventure in human history on the one hand, but on the other end, you know, this was going to be, it needed to be a really personal uh, family story about this marriage and this family struggling through the years that led up to the moon landing and uh, so we we felt like if we could shoot it in a way where the audience always felt like they were right there physically mm-hmm. they yeah. were there in the capsule uh, and sometimes that means only seeing what the astronauts would see yeah. not going outside um, that they were there in the household that they were there with the kids and with the families um, that you know that that uh, sort of as Ryan was saying you, you could hopefully come away feeling like you got to see what Neil saw um, and so you know mm-hmm. down to like moments in the moon where we shoot a lot of it from neil's pov yeah. that was sort of that was the angle Incredible. i wanted to take it's right. genius because it's intimate it's such an intimate film and it's such an intimate it allows you to have great intimate performances because the camera's real tight and it feels like a family drama mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're going to work in a space capsule right <laughs> and it takes you back and forth in such a way and i also i, I i'm sorry i'm obsessed with the first scene but I, there is a moment in that where your use of sound and structure and what what Neil Armstrong is seeing in that moment and the, the changes where he leaves the atmosphere, mm-hmm. spoiler alert, leaves the atmosphere and, and he sees that arc of, of the very thin veneer layer mm-hmm. of, of you know what's left of the atmosphere. And we, we've seen it a couple of times in both science stuff and in, in, like I said, in the right stuff and other things. It, but 
all of a sudden you realize it was shot like how they'd really see it. Because you get inside any kind of government built plane or anything, and it's kind of it's kind of cheap inside feeling, right? Mm-hmm. You, know, you look at it and it's not what you think. Mm-hmm. It's not Hollywood. It always looks like it needs a paint job. Seriously. And you made the decision to make it look like that, not yeah. to make it to make it look like it really looks. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 those real planes, those real capsules. I wouldn't call them reassuring if, if you're about to get in them. You know, the, lo- the look of any of them. Right. Um, I think for the whole movie, we wanted people to feel the fear. You know, feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, my God, what these people were willing to do, the capsules they were willing to put themselves into, the risks they were they were willing to take. And yeah, you're talking about. I mean, sound certainly played a big part of that. Just trying to immerse the audience in that sound sensory experience. Music you were talking about was a big part of that. Um, just hopefully making you feel almost almost like virtual reality. Uh, you know, where where you just you, even though you know this this is a movie, it's a two dimensional medium. You're sitting there in the audience. You're not actually going into space. That hopefully you just feel on a sensory level like yeah. you're you're having that experience. Let's talk about the performance here, Ryan, if we can, very quickly, about the idea of of Neil Armstrong as a as a figure because obviously he passed away you know well before you, you know you were considering this role right so how were you able to find him and his voice because he doesn't have much of a voice he's one of the quietest least lowest profile American heroes yeah well there there aren't um, there aren't a lot of uh, physical things you can physicalize in order to create the performance and, and create windows. Uh, into him, but there's an extraordinary depth of character to him that the more you learn about him, the more fascinating he is, the more the, his reasons for being remote. Um, there's just many layers there, and, and the challenge was, but also, you know, was to honor that and not to sort of make him into somebody that is more cinematic and fun to watch, but somebody that, you know, uh, uh, to honor the depth that was there and to try and create windows into him so that the audience could see into uh, sort of, for instance, the grief that he was experiencing during the course of these missions mm-hmm. or just the extraordinary amount of uh, just how brilliant he was, how um, he was a person who lived his life outside of his own self-interest. And uh, um, he's, he's heroic in, in, these, in these ways that are... Um, you know that only if if you have a filmmaker like Damien who wants to pay attention to those subtleties and and wants to create those windows so that we can see into the character you know you, you're not going to get a chance to really get to know Neil in the way that he deserves to be known but that's one of the I think one of the great things about the film and the story is Neil Armstrong was the perfect man for that job mm-hmm. because he wasn't interested in self you know glory he wasn't mm-hmm. interested in becoming a superstar and Damien does a b- brilliant job of peppering the supporting cast with all kinds first of all almost every actor we recognize you know even if it's just one scene where like mm-hmm. you know there's Kieran Hines and there's Patrick Fugit and I mean just yeah. actor after actor Corey Stoll and some of them were such bigger than life characters so it's mm-hmm. great and of course Claire playing Neil's wife is you know gets the big emotional scene so you're there as the rock solid heart and soul of the film but all these other things are kind of exploding around you with these other folks yeah and creating um, you know texture like a you, you, you know, you you sort of love Neil because you love the people around him. You know, you realize how yeah. how it says a lot about him by who he he's surrounded by, and and I felt that was a, a beautiful way to get to know Neil because I, I didn't have the opportunity to meet him, but to get to know somebody through their family, through their children, um, through their friends, their coworkers. Mm. It's just a, they painted a very loving. A portrait of him. He was very admired by the people around him, and it touches the modern zeitgeist a little bit here too. If I can get you know really, really arcane here, but it's because astronauts are often played as reluctant cowboys, mm. and you played him as a reluctant nerd. <laughs> and I love that it, because he was he's an engineer, engineer? right? Yeah. I Purdue mean, University, Purdue, a civilian yeah. engineer who uh, became a you know the, the baddest ass pilot in the history of being a pilot, and he had to find a way. You and I, he had to find a way to survive in this kind of cowboy world of NASA and bureaucratic world of NASA. Mm-hmm. And I thought you you hit every single one of those notes for people. If you're a space geek, you are going to love this movie. I am. I'm willing to stake that this is the best space movie of all times. I'm willing to say that right now, and I've seen them all. But I, but this <laughs> is, and that's that is a gigantic statement because it's a it's that that over is littered with four star films, right? Mm. And you guys really pulled something off here because it's a human story, and it's not, you know, that's it, the swell of music 
and for you know, two guys who worked on La La Land together, you know a little something about swelling music, right? <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's used so judiciously here. It's really something. And I, to that point, how? At what point did Damien come to you, Ryan, and go, all right, I know we're working on this movie, and it's like, you know, a modern, big musical. Oh, I want to do this uh, this quiet space movie about a really, uh, uh, a guy who's got a lot of tragedy in his life and ends up on the moon. Oh, are you in? How did that happen? Well, that's what that's how we first met. Uh, we met about First Man, and then, uh, but Damien had this, had a musical to make first. <laughs> and so we ended up uh, talking more about Gene Kelly than Neil Armstrong yeah. in that first meeting. Um, but you know it was it was I got we're so lucky. Were you on lucky that movie at that point make... or no? Were you on La La Land no, at that point? No. Was that the meeting that got him on La La Land, Damien? Uh, yeah, I mean, ne- neither movie was a reality at that point. I mean, oh, I, did, I, I didn't have a script for First Man and La La Land. I had a script, but no one was making it. You know, it was just sort of languishing, and uh, uh, and so it was, it was on that blacklist, of, right? Was, Wasn't it on that list of of, uh, of no, scripts that the. the no, it didn't, didn't, didn't even make... You mean the sort of like the... The, the that, scripts that hadn't been like made that the, were these great scripts? Yeah, no, it didn't even, it didn't even make that. So it wow. was... Uh, Whiplash was on that, yeah. I remember mm-hmm. once. But uh, no, La La Land was like literally... <laughs> It was like the poor orphan. <laughs> Apparently, he wants to be drawer. a one-hit wonder off a of whiplash. <laughs> 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 do this next. What yeah. happens, kid? You know. <laughs> no, but even though they were very different films and they weren't a reality, it was like the way that Damien described them was, uh, you know, they were both stories that lended themselves to the big screen, and they were both stories that you would want to see in a theater and experience with other people, even though that they were mm. they were wildly different. And I felt even in that meeting, even even though there wasn't a script for First Man, just the way that he described that first X-15 sequence, I just realized just how immersive um, his films you know, could be and, and, and how just how wildly ambitious he was, but that he, he had the talent to back it up. In the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Damien, but you shot the finale in 70 millimeter, the, the, the landing sequences, uh, uh, sequence itself? The, the moonwalk itself, the moonwalk. we shot an IMAX film, mm-hmm. and uh, which, which was itself kind of an amazing yeah. uh, experience oh. and opportunity to <laughs> shoot. We shot it on a giant uh, rock quarry out, out at night, lit by sort of a giant light off in the distance mm. simulating the sun. Wow. And uh, so that was... Which caught of, fire. Uh, the light caught fire <laughs> twice. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Our cinematographer <laughs> built this light. It was the most powerful movie light, I think, ever made. Wow. And then... Uh, There's a reason they don't make them that powerful, yeah, because okay. they catch fire. There is the one chance you'll catch on fire. <laughs> Other than that, let's roll. <laughs> but luckily, really awful to lose a guy making the landing yeah, as opposed to at the not good. That's, not, <laughs> that's really... Luckily, he moment. made a backup, so we were able to keep wow. shooting. But. We were able to keep shooting, and then it started snowing. So we yeah. also we also have great outtake footage of uh, you know Neil and Buzz <laughs> Aldrin coming down the ladder in the snow uh, before we stopped. Houston, we, yeah. we we did not prepare for this. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to believe this. I left a footprint. It's a I, snowy footprint, <laughs> but it's a footprint. Are we good here? <laughs> it's a wonderful <laughs> life, Neil. It's a wonderful life. Yep. It was a real winter wonderland oh, my goodness. during that oh. week. <laughs> uh, well, what's next for you two? I would like to. I like. It, it, I don't know. I, I'm sure you guys have agents and everything, but if you don't, I'd be more than happy to uh, put the deal together if you did. guys want to work together oh, on thanks. something. Yeah. You got any ideas? You could write it on I'm, a napkin. Yeah, right I now. have I have a cocktail napkin right now. I've got a, <laughs> an idea for. Can I uh, can I ask in this moment where America is kind of looking at itself and saying who are we and what are we you know what are we all about? And you go back to NASA. Right, and NASA is yeah. one of those things that I think everybody can agree on, and and landing on the moon and and space exploration has always been sort of a hallmark brand for the United States. What do you want this movie? What do you want the first man to say to the United States? Well, you know, actually, I think what's so fascinating about this period in NASA is that um, it, is again that that it wasn't this foregone conclusion. In fact, that that you know, uh, certainly we all know of the '60s as as a very sort of divided time, but but also that even opinions about space exploration at that time were very divided, and uh, and you know the sort of argument about the pros and the cons, and and uh, an argument that you can understand when you look at something like the Moon mission uh, for what it really was. It was this outlandish idea, you know. It was right at the start of the '60s. We don't have the technology yet to do it, but we're going to say, yeah, we're going to put people on the moon by the end of the decade. It's insane. And actually, I think we take for granted how insane it was. We take for granted the whole thing because we live in the aftermath of right. the success. It, it, it being a success, uh, we take for granted. It, it, exactly. And uh, uh, I just find it astonishing, and I think I hope audiences take away from the movie just you know, to, to, to look at, to be reminded of that 
uh, this was ordinary human beings. This was a group of human beings, not superheroes, getting together to do something utterly extraordinary, utterly unprecedented, uh, not knowing if it would work. In fact, there was a lot of evidence it wouldn't work, you know, and, and, and walking this road filled with failure and loss and even tragedy um, to finally culminate in the success story that we all now can kind of revel in. I think that's a, it's just an insanely uh, inspiring, moving, relevant testament to uh, to heroism and what humans are capable of. And that's what I think is the key to the domestic scenes because we see this. We you know we see um, that this this is a, an American family. There's a there's a wife and a mother trying to hold the family together. Yeah. Uh, there's a moment where you know Neil has to tell his sons he's going to probably going to go to the moon, and of course his sons. Well, does that mean you're going to miss the swim meet that I've got coming up? Which mm-hmm. which reminds us that these were not as Roe has been saying these were not superheroes. These were very flawed, very brave, and sometimes you know almost crazy men, uh, you know to, to take this on. And, and a lot of the times their wives were saying that, like I you know I didn't sign up for this much. And Ryan, maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, playing with Claire Foy and against her and opposite her and with her, uh, and what that brought to the film. Well, it's 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 sort of uh, you know half of my performance is 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 Claire's hard work, you know, because she she makes Neil somebody that you you know you you again like you. You can access him emotionally because she's her her performance is so powerful and mm-hmm. she's uh, um, she's she's so strong on screen. She's such a great representation, I think, of 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 Janet, who I had the opportunity to meet before she passed away. And and you know, I, I always knew what she was doing was so uh, w- was was obviously so helpful uh, to me, uh, and I and I knew to the film. But it's it's been great to do. Um, to, to spend time now with the Armstrong sons mm-hmm. because they really can't and it's very it's really beautiful the way that they regard her and her performance of their mother right. they oh, really feel like it's a, a real testament to, to, to who she was that's fantastic that's gotta be amazing that's, that's a lot of pressure on Claire Foy right I mean that's just it's crazy to think about that where they're like well mom would have done it this way yeah. right but it, it is she does it's an amazing performance and you essentially yeah. built the house right is that correct I mean the, the, the Armstrong home like a replica of of their home at the time, yeah, yeah, we we uh, uh, but both homes that they live in, we sort of mm. did kind of full scale replicas of. But you know, again, I mean, all, all that, that that was because you know uh, we were able to go to the the existing house, but also that you know Rick Armstrong, Neil's son, drew us a floor map. You know, it's kind of like his dad, wow. very you know just <laughs> engineering, smart engineering, yeah. Mind. yeah. <laughs> And he and he was able to draw it out, and and it was an example of many of just the sons, the family being so helpful to us. We couldn't have gotten it right at this level mm-hmm. um, uh, to this degree if it weren't for them. And and the fact that they, you know, say what they say about um, Claire's performance, and 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 I might add Ryan's performance. Um, yeah, that, that, I, that's, that, that, yeah, that, that's a little that, something there too. That they, uh, well, that little thing, but the, yeah, no, but, yeah. but that but that they feel they see their mom and dad um, honestly reflected on screen. That I think for us is the biggest relief and the biggest joy. Yeah, one of my honor. favorite stories is when we rebuilt their their childhood home and uh it, it, it for us it felt like some kind of time you know because we had seen it in these life magazine photographs yeah. it felt like time travel and and they came to set and we were all watching them uh, to see what what they would mm. say you know what a surreal experience to have happen and uh and rick said uh yeah it's it's good um do you want me to tell you what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> right to it. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. First man opens, Son of Neil. <laughs> opens Friday. Do, uh, you know, run. Uh, uh, take a picture. What do you do? Get to this movie <laughs> to see it because it is, it's to my eye, uh, one of the great, the greatest space movie. If you're into space, this does it in a way that I think this is so true to what those really, really brave people mm-hmm. did. And what they experienced, and how scary that whole thing really was, and it takes you into it in a real way, in a sciencey scary way, not a monster scary way. But if you want to be a monster scary way, then go ahead and do it that <laughs> way. People should know this too. Yeah. It's also entertaining as hell. You got to know that going into yes. this. This is not a history. It is a history lesson, but it's beautiful and it's it's lovely, lovely, lovely performances throughout, and can be really funny at times as well. So it's the complete package as a film. People should know that. First man, Ryan Gosling. Thank you very much, oh, Damien Chazelle. So much for having. Thank, thank you for thank everything you so you've much. done. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.